We move on uh, to our last uh, speaker, who is uh, Cengiz Gunesh. And um, apart from being associate lecturer at the Open University, he is also the author of Kurdish National Movement in Turkey, From Protest to Resistance, and is a co-editor of uh, another book on the Kurdish uh, question, which is Kurdish Question in Turkey, New Perspective on Violence, Representation and Reconciliation. Thank you, uh, thank you for your kind words, Ursula. Uh, uh, in the, the previous three speakers were on how to make peace, how to end sort of how to make how to end conflicts. Conflicts, and my focus is going to be slightly different. Uh, I'm going to look at why peace is not happening in Turkey, and in doing so, I'm going to try to understand why the positive developments in the past decades, su decades such as the significant decrease in violence by the PKK since its unilateral ceasefire in '99. Uh, and Turkey's legal reforms that have granted limited cultural and linguistic rights to the Kurds have so far uh, failed to result in, the, in a comprehensive uh, transformation of the conflict. And more specifically, I'm going to look at why sort of the difficulties caused by the rigid... Sorry, I'm a bit quiet, so... Uh, I'm going to look at the difficulties caused by rigid dominant ideologies in Turkey that have been preventing the construction of a dominant, uh, sorry, construction of a democratic and plural society and a new, new framework to manage diversity and pluralism in Turkey, which in my view is central to the transformation of the conflict. Uh, my brief overview will look, look at uh, Kurdish politics in Turkey and give a kind of a a brief idea of how what happened in the past 50 years. Uh, then I'm going to look at uh, the demands of the Kurdish movement in Turkey. In a way, what do the Kurds want? Uh, while the proposals put forward by the Kurdish national movement have been uh, quite clear, it has not been able to generate the necessary shift in the public debate in Turkey on the Kurdish question. And I will look at uh, the positions of the main mainstream and the dominant political parties in Turkey and identify the key ideological difficulties that have so far functioned as barriers to conflict resolution. So the overall aim of my talk is to reflect on the political debate in Turkey around the Kurdish question and to highlight the reasons why Turkey is unable to accommodate Kurdish demands. Um, briefly, Kurdish political activism in Turkey. Uh, Kurdish question has been part of Turkey's history as a, as a republic. In 1920s and 30s, uh, the Kurds took part in a number of uh, up uprisings and which were defeated. Um, 1940s and 50s are often described as the period of quiet years. Uh, not much political activism happened because of the Kemalist dictatorship. Um, but nevertheless, Kurdish question still remained um, were in high in the agenda of the Turkey. Uh, since 1960s, what has been happening is Kurds started to persistently challenge the Kemalist regime in a more organized form. Initially, in 1960s and 70s, this took the form of a non-violent protest and Kurdish group specific demands were articulated as part of demands for equality in Turkey. However, from the late 90s, 1970s onwards, the idea of, um, of violence became kind of the, mo the, the main accepted uh, form of political uh, struggle. So Kurds started to think, well, we, we cannot achieve our rights unless we I'm sorry, I'm doing a very bad job so far. <laughs> um, louder. Okay. So the Kurds start... Is this working? 
Yeah, okay. The Kurds started to demand, that, uh, started to think that they cannot achieve their rights and political demands if they don't use arm. Uh, that was because the, the, the regime in Turkey was so close to any possibility of allowing Kurdish demands to be represented in any legal form. And so placing extensive punitive measures to on the articulation of Kurdish political and cultural demands can be said to have reinforced the view that the forceful overthrow of Turkish state rule was is indispensable to Kurdish, in, to Kurdish liberation. And such a framing of the Kurdish question in Turkey is best epitomized by the PKK's national liberation discourse and its insurgency. Uh, so between 19, 1984 and 19, 1999, the PKK uh, fought an insurgency against the Turkish state, uh, which was briefly interrupted by three uh, unilateral ceasefires in 1993, 1995, and 1997. In 1999, the PKK's leader, Abdullah Jalan, was caught in Kenya and since then has been sentenced to life imprisonment. Uh, Öcalan's capture brought a major political change in the PKK. In 1999, the PKK declared a permanent ceasefire, which was held until 2004. Subsequently, uh, <coughs> since 2004, there have been periods where a violence kind of re kind of restarted and it continued and then it stopped again so it, uh, but none of the violence has been as sustained or as uh, uh, organized f during the 1994 uh, 1984 until the 99 so pkk did start using violence, but it wasn't uh, going back to the previous uh, strategy. It was more selective, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so from 1999, one, the key demand f has been for political reconciliation and a peaceful solution to the conflict. Uh, that has been PKK's key demand. In addition to the PKK, uh, Kurdish, uh, pro-Kurdish political parties have also been uh, articulating Kurdish demands in Turkey. And since its formation in 1990, uh, the pro-Kurdish democratic movement has been represented by a number of political parties. Uh, due to the na nature of the demands they have been uh, raising, such as the constitutional recognition of Kurdish identity and the institutional legal limitations in Turkey, uh, they have been uh, considered as outsiders and many of them have been closed down. Uh, currently, the pro-Kurdish political party in Turkey is the, the Peace and Democracy Party, the BDP. And the, I mean, if we think of Kurdish movement as a network of organizations, the PKK and Kurdish, pro-Kurdish political party being the main ones, uh, we can say that uh, the main Demands can be summarized as follows. Uh, one, a negotiated settlement to end the conflict. Two, the recognition of Kurds as a distinct national group. And accommodation of their rights and demands within a democratic Turkey. And the development of the democratic solution to the Kurdish question through political means. And the transformation of the current state system in the Middle East into federal and con confederal entities are stated as the key objectives. Um, furthermore, in 2005, the Union of Kurdish Communities in, in Kurdish KJK was also established, and this is designed as an alternative hybrid institutional framework to provide political representation to to Kurds and allow them to organize as a nation within the existing state boundaries. And more formal, uh, formally, uh, more, more recently, since 2000, August 2010, democratic autonomy has been uh, described as a specific proposal for the solution of Kurdish question in Turkey. Now, so it's, it's in a way, what the Kurds want is like, is, is quite clear. In terms, they want national rights for themselves. They want to be able to uh, educate 
children in Kurdish, and they want to be recognized as a, as a, as a nation, like constitutionally recognized as a nation. Uh, the Turkish state's response, however, has not been very clear. Uh, well, it has been quite clear in the per past 30, 30 years. The dominant approach has been uh, repression of the insurgency and elim elimination of the PKK's presence in the region. So counterinsurgency has been the dominant policy, and Kurdish question is viewed within the security discourse. So it's, it's seen as a case of uh, violence, terrorism, and any other alternative articulations of the Kurdish questions question has not received much uh, attention from the media or from the public in general. Uh, since 2002, the AKP, the Justice and Development Party, has been carrying out numerous democratization reforms, uh, part of which a limited, part, some of which has resulted in a limited recognition of Kurdish identity in Turkey, uh, the establishment of Kurdish language TV station, uh, Terete Şeş, as part of a state broadcasting network in January 2009, is often given as proof of uh, AKP's tolerance of the Kurds. However, uh, doubts remain over the ex extent of AKP's tolerance because of its consistent refusal to commit to the full recognition of Kurds' linguistic rights such as the provision of education in Kurdish language. Additionally, by emphasizing communalities such as the Islamic heritage and Ottoman past, the aim of AKP's government's political reforms has been to lessen the appeal of Kurdish nationalism and to depoliticize Kurdish identity. Um, this has become quite clear, clearer in the Kurdish in initiative, which was uh, declared on in August 2009, and it was is a big news in Turkey. Everybody was talking about it, and uh, at the time, the main politi opposition political parties uh, rejected the the Republican People's Party and the Nationalist Action Party. They rejected any possibility of uh, public recognition of Kurdish identity. So there was a, a lack of consensus on the level of public recognition of Kurdish identity. And this is uh, something I'll, I'll explain a bit more, uh, is the main reason why Turkey is finding very difficult to accommodate Kurdish uh, demands. Um, so what the Kurds want is like national universal rights that the Turks have in Turkey. What AKP has been trying to, what the, the, the most they are willing to give is mm, sort of very few rights, minority rights for the ethnic minorities. So the Kurds are not recognized as a nation, but you can learn Kurdish uh, two hours a week if you want to go to school. If you, you know. it's, it, in terms of, um, anyway, I'll explain a bit more. Um, this, the AKP's Kurdish initiative process, or, uh, initiative project, was uh, was when when it was made public, it was de uh, it was described as a democratic initiative process, the national oneness and brotherhood project. It's very difficult to get a clear sense of the level of Kurdish level of public recognition of Kurdish identity in Turkey. And, and the document as a whole is, is, is really vague. Uh, the vagueness coupled with refusal to engage with Kurdish <coughs> national movement is highly reflective of uh, the government's attitude towards the Kurds and the Kurdish movement. Uh, while the AKP um, has indicated a willingness to go, to go beyond uh, the security discourse in its, in its framing of the Kurdish questions, it approach also embeds the security discourse with the elimination of the PKK being a stated objective of the proposal. So it's not about making peace, it's about eliminating the PKK. This is how the AKP presents its, um, its proposal. Uh, 
Uh, additionally, during uh, 2001 election campaign, Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan repeatedly stated that the policy of denial of Kurdish identity has been repealed during AKP's rule. However, such a statement is misleading as the AKP's policy throughout the 2000s has been uh, one of toleration without formal recognition. In the period following the 2001 election, the state oppressive measures have intensified and the, uh, and the government has taken measures to implement comprehensive anti-terror policy, leading to an escalation in military attacks, uh, attacks against the PKK and in and the intensification of, of uh, the suppression of the pro-Kurdish uh, Peace and Democracy Party. The, this change in policy can be seen as being reflective of AKP's authoritarian streak and its insistence to integrate Kurds through depoliticizing Kurdish identity, as well as uh, being influenced by right-wing populist tradition of Turkish politics, the AKP's policy are also a product of statist Islam, as described by uh, Christopher Houston. And it is not clear whether its toleration of difference incorporates acceptance of pluralism. And now I quote from Christopher Houston, who says, In short, statist Islamist discourse, as exemplified in the enter enterprise headed by Fethullah Gülen, conceives the Kurdish problem as residing in the Kurdishness of the Kurds. Transform this identification, and there will be no Kurdish question left to ponder. The, the vagueness of AKP's proposals and refusal to engage with Kurdish national movement is also a characteristic shared by the mainstream <coughs> opposition parties in Turkey. Uh, however, the successive failure of the CHP as an electoral alternative to AKP has led to a change in leadership of the moder uh, leadership of the CHP and, and the election of the moderate. Uh, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu as the CHP's new leader in 2010. And additionally, Kurdish human rights activists uh, such as uh, Sezgin Tanrakulu and Hüseyin Aygün have also been elected to the parliament with former being, with Sezgin Tanrakulu appointed as the deputy chairman of the party and elected into the party's electoral board. The change in personnel has resulted in a process of change and a marked lessening in the party's nationalist rhetoric. In stark contrast to the party's position in the 1990s and 2000s, the JHP's 2001 manifesto specifies uh, numerous democratization proposals, such as political pluralism, respect for diversity, and the promotion of rights and freedoms. Uh, however, again, with w similar to the AKP's position, the Kurds' recognition of Kurdish identity, uh, public recognition of Kurds as a nation, and support for Kurdish education is not part of the, the way they see the solution. So still a very, very limited approach. Um, the difficulties involved in generating a consensus among the political parties in Turkey concerning the definition of Kurdish question and appropriate measures to address the Kurdish demands is due to the political power of the Turkish nationalists. Various variants of Turkish nationalism continue to play a significant role in shaping the debate on the public recognition of Kurdish identity and culture in Turkey. The inflexible legal order together with the political influence of the staunchly Turkish nationalist army has also contributed to this barren political environment. The brief reflection on ideological and political dimensions of the current difficulties reveals the significant role Turkish nationalism play in countries' uh, political practices. It is the nationalist framing of the Kurdish question as strictly a security issue that continues to enact barriers to address addressing the popular Kurdish demands and shapes how the democratic uh, dialogue in Turkey is, uh, is being pursued. Also, uh, the ongoing debate in Turkey frames Kurds, Kurdish demands as being incommensurable with acceptable notions of rights for citizens of Turkey. 
So, for example, Kurds' demands for increased autonomy and education in Kurdish language are rejected because it's been is seen as a threat to the unity of the nation and Turkey's unitary structure. Um, I'll end here. Thank you. Thank you.